Podcasts. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. From Afghanistan to the Philippines to Mexico to Spain, women across the globe are taking to the streets today to mark International Women's Day. In Spain, women have launched the first nationwide feminist strike in Spain's history. Feminists, they're chanting, banging pots and pans and refusing to work for 24 hours. Organizers say its supporters include Aracalao, the mayor of Barcelona, and Manuela Carmena, the mayor of Madrid. Organizers published a manifesto reading, quote, Today we call for a society free of sexist oppression, exploitation and violence. We call for rebellion and a struggle against the alliance of the patriarchy and capitalism that wants us to be obedient, submissive and quiet. We do not accept worse working conditions, not being paid less than men for the same work. That is why we're calling a work strike, the manifesto said. Speaking in Madrid, 21-year-old Eva Gutierrez explained why she joined the strike. We are protesting for equality, for the rights of women, to show we are not inferior. We want to work, live in peace, to have the same rights as any man, because we are people. And as people, we have the same right to protest, to go on strike. We cannot be demeaned, and we must not be afraid to go out, say what we feel and what has happened to us in our lives, what we have had to suffer just because we were born as women. In South Korea, International Women's Day rallies were held in Seoul as the Me Too movement sweeps the country. Earlier this week, a leading South Korean politician who was seen as a possible presidential candidate, An Hee-jung, resigned his post as a provincial governor after his secretary said he raped her multiple times. Organizers of today's rally in Seoul said the Me Too movement's inspiring more women to speak out. Last year, although we did not ignore this issue of sexual discrimination, it was not widely mentioned. But the change this year is that people are more vocal, though some still do not dare to speak out. We should try to encourage people to speak out and take actions to make practical changes in our society. This is very different from what we encountered last year. In other International Women's Day actions, Filipino women have rallied in Manila to protest the policies of the Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. Afghan women held a rare public rally in Kabul. In Kenya, African women are meeting today to discuss ending violence against women and girls with disabilities. Meanwhile, in England, women organized a major march Saturday to mark the 100th anniversary of women getting the vote. Speakers included Helen Pankhurst of Care International, the granddaughter of suffragette Emmeline Pankhurst. This opportunity is to say how far have we got over 100 years. And actually, surprisingly, the issues that they were campaigning on, that my grandmother and great grandmother were campaigning on 100 years ago, they're still so similar today. You know, that getting the vote didn't resolve everything. So it's up to this generation now to do as much as they can. That's why we're out here. Here in the United States, rallies are scheduled to take place across the country. But we go now to Madrid, Spain, where we're joined by Maria Carrion, independent freelance journalist. Maria, can you describe this first ever feminist march across Spain that has just taken place? Well, hi, Amy, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be with you. Um, well, you know, organizers of the strike were declaring victory even before midnight rolled around here in Spain, just because um, this announcement of a first feminist strike ever has thrown the debate um, into the forefront of um, uh, the media, uh, politicians. Everyone's been forced to react to this and to talk about this enormous inequality that exists here in Spain between men and women. Um, at midnight, as, uh, as we saw, saw um, in the images, women came out um, and banging pots and pans. And that's how the strike began. Um, uh, newsrooms are empty here today. Uh, actually, you know, some, some talk shows uh, went, went dark, uh, talk shows that had women um, um, leading them. 
uh, and you you don't you only hear women's voices on the radio if they're being interviewed. Um, on the, for the most part, women have walked out of their jobs if they possibly can. They're out in the streets, and what's really extraordinary is the amount of very young women that you see on the street uh, claiming their rights. This is a very young movement, and uh, it's a very hopeful movement. Women who are, have not been able to go on strike, especially those who are caring, because this is not just a, a strike where people are going. Uh, leaving their workplace, but also um, they, they are stopping the caregiving if they can and asking the men to replace them. The idea is for Spaniards to understand how critical women's work is and what happens when women don't show up at work. And women who cannot leave their um, caregiving duties are hanging aprons on their um, uh, balconies to, uh, to show support. Um, you, you see the streets are full everywhere. Um, in uh, Spain, just in Madrid, there's over 100 rallies, marches, um, gatherings. And as you mentioned, um, our two women uh, mayors of the largest cities of Spain, Ada Colau and Manuela Carmena, have both also watched, walked out of their jobs. So they are also on strike. Um, there's an 82% support public support of this strike. So people understand the reasons why women are going on strike this year. Um, you know, uh, our wage gap is at around 22%. Women doing exactly the same work as men, are earning 22% less on average, um, and also heavily underrepresented in top positions in companies and the government and the public sector. As part of today's strike in Spain, hundreds of women took part in a bike protest in Madrid. This is Noemi Sanchez, an engineer in Spain. We are here to claim our rights and to make visible all the inequalities of our role in society, which apparently doesn't count that much. We are here to make the problems visible and to give strength. This is an historic moment, and we are here to support it. What we are lacking is for the whole of society to start really realizing that there is a part of the population which has more privileges than the other. When people, from young children to adults, get to understand this, then it would be evident we don't really have the same privileges and opportunities. So, Maria, can you describe how the this movement and the Me Too movement around the world, is it affecting the politics of Spain? Um, we just heard in South Korea uh, one of uh, possible presidential candidates had to resign after his secretary accused him of uh, repeatedly raping her. Um, in the United States right now, President Trump is engulfed in uh, yet another scandal uh, around uh, sexual harassment. Um, uh, and in this case, uh, being involved with or denying being involved with an adult film star and her fighting being silenced. Um, well, in terms of government policy and effects on uh, on uh, government leadership, unfortunately, all that we've had here so far in the central government of Spain has been a pushback. Um, uh, the, the governing party, the PP, is not supportive of this feminist strike. Um, in fact, this health, social services and equality minister went so far as to say that this strike is, a, is like a declaration of, war, uh, of a war between sexes. Um, uh, we've heard also from the, from the uh, Catholic Church mixed uh, views, but the, the Bishop of San Sebastián said the devil has gotten into uh, feminists. Um, and in general, there's been no support practically for this mobilization on the part of the, of the government. However, um, I think that they are being forced into a corner. Um, they've had to walk back some of the declarations that they had initially made when they've seen um, the massive response of Spanish society with this strike. And we are hoping in Spain for uh, cha a change. However, uh, we are not expecting it from the PP. The PP has been, been very regressive when it comes to women's rights. We are seeing change on local level. We are seeing, um, uh, in, you know, and, and, and the fact that also the PP does not have a majority rule means that it can't pass regressive laws in Spain because it doesn't have the support. But at the same time, 
uh, for real significant change, political change to happen in Spain, we're going to have to change governments. Um, so we'll see. There's just there's a few years left for the elections, general elections. And we have not seen. We've seen a Me Too movement in Spain, uh, in in uh, the film and the media. However. Uh, male aggressors have yet to fall. Uh, we have not seen the Harvey Weinstein effect happen in Spain quite so much yet. I think that's, that's still to come. But this is an unusual period where you have two women, heads of two major cities in Spain, in Madrid and Barcelona, both uh, expressing support for these rallies, being part of them. Is that right? That's right. And and they and all of their female staff have gone on strike. So there are no women in um, the Spanish city halls right now in, in sorry, in Barcelona and in, in Madrid. And they are very significant women uh, and leaders in this country because these are two, uh, the two largest cities. And this is what I'm referring to, that locally we can expect uh, to, to see continued policies of change um, uh, uh, in terms of equality. But on the national level, uh, we still see the PP um, being extremely reluctant to, for instance, put money behind laws, you know, because we have equality laws. There's just not enough um, resources to uh, investigate and to uh, prosecute cases of inequality. Um, and that's what, where the change has to come, really. Maria Carionu, and thank you very much for being with us, independent journalist and filmmaker and former Democracy Now! producer, speaking to us from Madrid, Spain. When we come back, we'll be joined by the head of the International Women's Strike here in the United States, Tithi Bhattacharya. Stay with us.